Okay, this is going to be a pure and simple rant about LARPers. Um, I recently watched the movie Shoot 'em Up Again, which is basically a horrific, campy style movie. But two things come out of it that are classic. Number one, Paul Giamatta should not play anything except a bad guy. He's too good at it. Uh, but number two is I got a kick out of when Clive Owen would basically shoot, kick, do whatever he had to to people that just did things that annoyed him. So I'm going to cover what annoys me with LARPers because it doesn't seem to be um, unique situations. It seems to be something that, that carries through um, whole groups of LARPers, and I don't understand it. There's no way to really classify it into a breakdown, so I'm just going to start taking shots. First off, false family. Either you're related to somebody or you're not. Claiming somebody is your brother, somebody could be like a brother, you know, they're your homeboy, you know, we're all butt brothers, but there's people out there that actually make it sound like they are blood related when they're not. It, it's one of the stupidest things I've ever seen. And all it does really is degrade the whole concept of familial ties and heritage. That leads into false illnesses. Oh my god, gamers are the worst when it comes to lying about things that are affecting them. Um, fibromyalgia. That seems to be the female hypochondria that has been ripping through everybody for the last few years. Everybody claims to have it. I've seen maybe two people that had legitimate cases of it in my time, but I've heard about 30. They all claim they have it. There's 80% of female gamers I know claim they have some form of fibromyalgia. Why? Because it reaps in the pity, you know, the pity actions. People, when people pity them, they get away with more. Uh, Two-faced whiners. People who are going to whine to everybody about a certain person or, or the staff or whatever it may be about everything that they think is wrong but if you ask them about it directly or confront them oh no I wouldn't say that dog or no they misunderstood me or no that was somebody else um, it just makes you spineless if you, if you can't back up what you're gonna say if you're not going to say it to somebody's face why say it, it just shows that you're a coward Spineless, there's a second version of that, which are the people that, I don't understand why they play it sometimes, because they can't say no to anybody. They can't even play a character that's going to say no to anybody. Che uh, cheaters. Everybody cheats once or twice in their life, even if it's on accident. Because I've seen people who have cheated, but it's been on accident, because they misunderstood a rule or what whatnot. It's the compulsive cheaters that really annoy me. The people that if you bust them, they're still going to try to do it, or they're going to try to do it under other narrators or storytellers, or in scenes where there's no you know, direct supervision. They're the lowest of the low. Um, unreliable sorts. If you're going to tell me as your storyteller that you're going to be at game and to prepare for you, show the fuck up. Or at least contact me and say, hey, I'm not going to be there. Because there ain't nothing worse than having games start at 7 o'clock, have four people who ask the question, hey, is Joe going to be there? Yeah, he, yeah, he told me he's going to be there. He'll be here today. And then 7.45 comes around and those four people have been stuck out of character because they've been waiting for this scene that they think needs, needs to happen at the beginning of game. And Joe never shows up because he decided to go out to the bar, he was tired... His girlfriend wouldn't let him. Whatever it may be. Call. Common courtesy. Jesus Christ, people. Um, Multi-gamers. There are a number of people out there that... they play In the course of a month, they play in eight different LARPs. They have seven or eight different Chronicles of Tabletop going. And they never seem to be able to differentiate them. They can't figure out which character did what because they make too many of their characters too similar because they don't have the capacity to play um, a pantheon of characters. If they did, they if they did have that capacity to be able to play a whole pantheon of characters and separate their personalities, their agendas, their goals, and their actions and results, they would probably be a storyteller unto themselves. 
Um, these are the, these are the people that make games difficult because they don't figure out what's different between games. They'll be playing in three vampire games and three werewolf games, and all the rules are different every game. And they bring in what they consider the best rules from each of the games into each of the other games and argue them. All you are are problems. You know, you just make us want to kick you in your little vagina and throw your ass out. Plain and simple. Um, wannabes. <laughs> And these come in various categories. Uh, wannabe pagans, wannabe Wiccans, um, wannabe ethnicities. You know, stay true to your heritage. If you're Irish, you're Irish. If you're English and you're claiming to be Irish, okay. If you're obviously um, Asian and you're claiming to be Irish, and I'm not talking about playing a character, because that's acting. That's what we're all about. You know, we're all about being um, novice thespians. But I'm talking about those people that will claim the crap that aren't. You know, just because they think something's cool in it. Um, whatever. My favorite character to play are Geta Fenris, so I, I'm, I'm German. Really? Where's the German in your lineage? It's not there. Or, you're pagan? Okay, what are your beliefs? They can't answer you. They're doing it because it's a bandwagon thing. It, it seems cool to them, or it gives them something to make themselves interesting, because they apparently don't view themselves as very interesting to begin with. Uh, then there's the skirt chasers, or I don't know what you want to call the other, the female side of it, the sausage collectors, the ones who are pretty much there to find out who they're going to sleep with next. I've seen whole games that seem like they're dedicated to it. There's no point to be associated with those because there's no there's no fun to it. It's all about oh gee, you know the girl who's actually looks like she's going to be getting into the storyteller's pants is going to be getting the most, and the person who's just there to role play and not try to sleep with anybody is probably going to get the shaft and get put to the side and whatever. They're going to kill them off and make them an example to make them feel like they actually role-played for the night. Um, <laughs> the deluded. The people that can't separate game from reality. They'll take OOC stuff and they'll make it into their life. They hate you at game, so they're going to hate you out of game. Uh, they want to destroy your character in game, so they're going to try to destroy you in game. They're trying to get themselves ahead, so they're going to, they're going to continually do it. Those are the most toxic type of players possible, and they need to go away. But you're always going to have them, and a lot of times people put up with them, not because of them, because they inevitably have the best friend that's that's the most likable person in the world. And so you put up with the toxic one because you, want, you don't want to kick the, the likable one out. There comes a time when you have to actually make that sacrifice because it's best for, for the game. Uh, the hopelessly ignorant. Everybody's seen one of these. Somebody who's been gaming for 10 years in the same chronicle, in the same systems, and still doesn't know the rules. It's like they refuse to learn the rules, or they refuse to learn the genre, or they refuse to acknowledge anything that's happened. It, you know, it's frustrating. And it's not just frustrating for the staff, it's frustrating and infuriating for the players around them. Um, the players who play their themselves as PCs, you know... They make their characters based on themselves. Okay, that's not what this is about. It's about escapism. All you manage to achieve when you play yourself, unless it's um, an experimental chronicle in that regard, is you get offended. Because you're going to see people do stuff to you that you can't conceive of why they would do it to you in person, and you're going to take offense to it. And there's, there's really no range in playing yourself. So it's like, whatever. Those people are just kind of sad. Uh, drama queens. Now, drama queens that keep it in character, beautiful things to have in game. Drama queens that take it out of character, horrible. You know, they're the ones who break down when their characters are, you know, somebody's coming after their character. And I'm talking break down out of character so that they wrap up the scene and cause it to cause problems to the point where the scene might not get concluded, you know, get concluded and therefore they survive. Um, the ones who, if you do manage, if they do get killed in the scene, it couldn't have been legitimate. So they're going to claim either the player who killed them was cheating, or the staff was cheating, or everybody's had it out for them. <clears throat> There's always going to be a reason. It's never that you simply had bad tests or you got outgamed. Um, the salesmen. These are gamers that are at game, but they're not there to play. They're out there to sell whatever their business is. Um... 
whatever they happen to be into at the time, they're there to sell. They pull people out of character. They are detrimental storylines. They tend to leave in the middle of stuff. There's no place for them in game. I mean, you can in the beginning, you know, in the in the sign in for game or in the wind down from game after everybody signed out. If you have something you have to sell, sell it there. I mean, Lord knows those of us who have kids, that's where, you know, if they have fundraisers for cookies or candies or whatever it may be, that's where we sell them. Um, the experts. The ones who are very condescending. They know everything. They're never wrong. And they're better than you. That's what they come across as. They will never listen to you. And as such... You don't ever want to be around them. Most storytellers suffer from this at one time or another. I know I did. Um, I finally got to the point where I realized that players have ideas. They're good ideas. They're not always refined. They could be refined. You got to listen to them. You're not. You might be. You know. You might be an expert on some things, but it's not about flaunting your expertise. It's about using your expertise to either help somebody achieve what the, their goal, such as making a character, or to help educate people and make them better. Because that's what it's all about. Everybody should be getting better every time they, they play, when they go do stuff. You should always be learning something. The poltroons. A lot of people understand what this word is because it's listed as one of the um, natures and demeanor archetypes in Vampire and Werewolf from uh, World of Darkness. A poltroon knows a lot, knows a little about a lot of things, but doesn't know a lot about anything. They know just enough to make themselves sound competent until they run into an expert. You know, it's the, it's the person who's going to sit there and brag about Doctor Who until they run into a Whovian who looks at him and goes, "What are you talking about?" You know, because they're going to hear something in it that's flawed. And the poltroons are they're like the experts. The difference between a poltroon and an expert, an expert is arrogant with a little bit of justification. A poltroon is arrogant, and there is no justification. Um, the boffers. I play in mainly cerebral role-playing games, so role-playing LARPs. The ones where challenges are done via, you know, paper, scissors, rock, cards, numbers, something. There is no physical contact. But you got the boffers, and they can't let loose of it. The boffers are wannabes. Because they think they're physically fit or have some physical capability they want to show off. They basically, they're not truly role-playing. They're taking themselves and putting themselves into another genre. Whether it be the dark horror mythos of vampire, the dark tragedy mythos of werewolf, um, the fantasy mythos of various boffer larp games out there like Amp Guard Nero, the SCA, and so on, you know, sci-fi, steampunk, you name it. They're putting themselves into it and seeing what they can do. They don't tend to have a lot of role-playing capacity. Um, their ceiling tends to be a ceiling that true role players passed up well gee when they were playing Dungeons and Dragons the original or second edition they just don't have that capacity because they, they can't truly role play I mean I'm sorry I can take I can take certain people and give them the best character in the world for sword fighting. Make myself the most weak and cerebral person ever. Put a sword in my hand and I'm still better than them. Unless I want to role play myself down. I want to downplay it. You know, and act like I don't know what I'm doing. But if the other person doesn't have the ability, how do they play themselves up? Is it like uh, wrestling? Where... You were made. You were made to look good by the ability of your opponent. <clears throat> it's the buffer system is probably more flawed than the than the regular role playing LARP systems. And that's saying some. Uh, last thing I'll cover is uh, the silly fucks. Malkavian, some Bonars, Ragabash. Um, every genre has somebody like them. You all know them. 
You know, they're the goofballs, the ones who, they do nothing important. They act like children or babies or, you know, whatever. They're, it seems like they're always looking for a laugh at a game. And they're doing nothing productive. They're not making game better for anybody. They're not making anything fun. They're just making a spectacle of themselves. You know, it's a position I expect to see, uh, well, if you allow youngins into the game, teenagers. Why? Because they're trying to be seen. Because that's all they're going to be. They're going to be seen, but they're not going to be noticed. Okay, well, that's my rant for right now. Um... I'm sure people are going to read in a lot to why I why it popped up now. They're probably going to be wrong. Um, which is something I felt like I wanted to do. And disagree with me, disagree with me if you want. Or you know what? You probably have seen other stuff that I, I either forgot or didn't notice. Add it in if you want. You know, make a note and, you know, let me know what else what else is out there that you see that just annoys you the you know to death and it's something that is concurrent through a number of gamers it's not just an you know individual quirk on one person so okay guys peace out i'm wrapping it up